So, uh, 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 money is not the source of all evil. The love of money is the source of much evil. Anyway, uh, <coughs> um, so, uh, God sometimes, uh, you know, angels are at work and angels, uh, you know, basically to, to fix someone, they got to get like no pain, no gain. I mean, like to get on a higher level, you have to go through struggles. You like, if you have a soft life, you know, I'm, I'm stealing from Chuck Swindoll. He said, uh, he said, uh, character, uh, who, who said that? No, who said that? Oh, shit. Oh, I know, I know who said it. Uh, okay, it's, uh, uh, the, the, there's a, uh, uh, what you call it? Uh, there's a video on YouTube. Why don't you go to it? Okay, I want to go to it. Okay, I didn't really want to listen to the whole thing. So, like, that Joseph is called out of the dungeon and climbs all the way to a prince, from a prisoner to a prince. And we learn in this study that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Now, let me ask you this question as we start. Do you believe that? Do you believe that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what you ask. Not only do I believe that God can do that, I believe that God will do that. Now the Bible says that promotion doesn't come from the east or the west or the south, but promotion comes from God. We could say promotion doesn't come from men, promotion comes from God. Therefore, if you are a man pleaser, if you try to manipulate the situations and circumstances so that you can take advantage of people who may be able to promote you, you basically are wasting your time. You really need to live your life in such a way that God is pleased with you. What is important is what God sees, because God is the one who promotes. Now, if there is a marker of the life of Joseph, at least one of them would be that during the early part of his life, from the time that he was born until he was 30, Holy shit, the more northern you are, the higher rank you are, like the country or some shit. What? Hey, we're stuck down here. What? The man went through some hardships. He f the ethnicities in the north seem to uh, correspond to uh, uh, like where they rank in society, don't they? Interesting. What? Like, go, go suffer in fucking misery, cold, and shit. Face difficulties. For the last 13 years, as this chapter opens up, he... Now, it isn't a question of, uh, or like, white supremacy. Well, what is it? It doesn't mean, like, only whites or some... Well, okay, what, I'm just gonna shut up. He's 30 years old. For the last 13 years, he has spent them in Egypt in slavery and in prison. He has had... He has been betrayed by his brothers. He has been slandered by his master's wife. He has been forgotten about by friends in prison. Joseph went through a lot. I think it's safe to say that you have not gone through as much as what Joseph went through. These experiences in the life of Joseph could have very easily have made him bitter. But I think that we learn how God uses hardships and difficulties by studying his life. Why does God allow us to go through hard times? Why is it that we face difficulties? I think Job finally got a hold of it. Joseph suffered a lot, but I don't think he suffered anywhere near as much as Job, do you? Out of all of the people in the Bible that suffered the most, Job is at the top of the list. And in the middle of the book of Job, early in the book of Job, Job says this, if God were a man and I could find him, I would track him down and I would sit across from him and I would say to him, what are you doing? There's a godly man saying that. Have you ever felt that way? Has your life ever taken such directions that you thought, if I could sit down in front of God and ask him what he was doing, I would do it. What are you doing, God? But later on, about chapter 20, 
Job said, God knows my ways, and when he has refined me, I will come forth as gold. Job found the key to what God... Okay, so, uh, interesting. Uh, the, basically, uh, no pain, no gain. Uh, the only way to get more glory and more character is to go through struggles and, tr you know, whatever. So, uh, you can, you can just look at today, everybody's a softy. Uh, I don't know, but uh, whatever. Uh, life's pretty soft. Anyway, so, uh, on the other hand, uh, it ain't so easy at a lot of jobs. Uh, certainly, job, simple jobs can be hell, you know. But uh, whatever. Uh, who am I to say? But on a superficial level, it looks like everybody's fat and soft. Anyway. So, uh, 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 yeah, so, uh, so God has to build character. You know, there's a commandment not to covet, which that, that means, uh, you know, there's the classic story where, uh, you know, I never asked for a raise, you know, but on the other hand, I didn't have a family to support. I, maybe it, maybe it's nothing to brag. Well, anyway, we will debate whether it's to brag about or not. But anyway, the, um, it's a classic story that uh, you get your raise and you're real happy and then you find out your, your neighbor got a higher one. And this always makes people very, very unhappy. And uh, why is that, you know? So that, that's kind of like, you know, in theory, I think uh, Catholic want, knows he should work on that. But it's, it's kind of like an instinct, isn't it? Uh, now, Terry, Terry's jealousy, jealousy is pretty fucked, isn't it? Like uh, with your spouse, right? So Terry's kind of like, oh, my God, I sort of like conquered some shit like this. doesn't feel very good, like conquering uh, such a fundamental instinct. But anyway, whatever, man. So... Uh, now the coveting thing is, uh, you could say it's necessary for a royal people, like a really, if you can conquer coveting, then you don't have a problem if your superiors get more than you. If you're a petty people, then you just can't stand, the only way that you can get royalty is it has to be a strong man. You know, in a, uh, in a royal people, they do not covet, and they're, they're, they want their their betters to be in a better position uh in a noble society in a noble country uh they want their betters to be in a better position they're perfectly happy to say oh clearly this guy's like like a lot of people don't have a concept of uh of, of uh if you can get rid of ambitions like why am i trying to get higher and higher and if you can get rid of uh, uh if you can get rid of uh what's the other word uh uh, 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 coveting and stuff like that you can get a harmonious uh, royal people you know so what uh, um, for what it's worth so what uh, um, uh, so where's he gonna say so like God told me that uh, on the Arab Jew conflict he said oil funny oil funny hopefully so what uh, I mean like God's got to like inject drama into the earth right so he's got to create these struggles that make the people grow. And a lot of I've heard Jews say that's just not right. They get that oil. They don't. They don't deserve it. They, don't, they didn't do anything for it. And like uh, anyway, uh, one of the things that's uh, that's critical in loving God is uh, your birthright. You know, it's important what you're born with. That's a little gift that you know you might not see God's actions much. Yeah, I don't think you have much. You. you a lot of people, they don't know what God does. But one thing you can count on is uh, if there is a God, he, he made you, you know, what you're born with. This is God's touch, touch on you. So all, your, all your, uh, your gifts and all your, and what you inherit, you know, if you're healthy, if you're strong. And this, this should be your, uh, these are the cherished gifts from God. And uh, there was a Jew in the Bible who got in big trouble. Uh, he, had, he had Esau and Jacob. And uh, one of them didn't value his birthright. He just gave it away. Now, to me, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, my Roman Catholic heritage, I, 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 I gave up. You know, it was kind of funny. And I totally turned my back on all that shit. I went and sold my soul. I was going to be an atheist scientist. You know, kind of like you're, it's a very, it's very, uh, it's very common in today's world for some reason. But anyway, so, uh, so, uh, uh, 
So God has to, sometimes he purpose. Now the Bible says don't don't give the um, the appearance of uh, of evil, right? So like, I, I, I don't, I don't, uh, when I, when I use the restroom in the Circle K or the restaurant or whatever, um, I want to pay that store if I can. So I, I better be buying stuff there. And uh, everyone needs a, a, a strong, everyone needs a strong conscience. And so Terry's got a debate, like, is this, you know, should I actually force myself to buy something I don't need? And that's, that might be a little silly. On the other hand, like, I'm in this, uh, I'm in this, va- I'm in this, I really love this little spot I got here, which is, uh, in a uh, car wash so like oh wow how, how am I, I'm gonna have to vacuum I do want to vacuum my car but like how do I pay these people you know I, I was handing money um, to like a, uh, a, uh, a cafe up there in Beatty Nevada um, which uh, um, uh, for use of their uh, they had a Wi-Fi and I was using it so I would like I would like to go hand them money. you know that's kind of ugly in some sense just handing money it's, in theory it might be better to like use the you know, buy the food and stuff, but it it kind of crossed the line. I was just I, was, I didn't really want to buy all those meals, and so, you know, I was kind of forced. It's the only it was my only option, and I don't know. Did I violate something like in starting to? This is this is when you start disrupting society, but like but like pulling in and like using their Wi-Fi in their parking lot and handing them money. You know that they don't. Society's starting to get disrupted. You know this is not. You're being a a, dis, a, a pretty serious disruption on the social structure you know but whatever so like uh uh yeah i mean you know there's a uh you know the funny thing there's a uh there's a vacuum cleaner uh car vacuum up in vegas and um my i, I, when I had to vacuum my car and my dad sent me over there and uh and uh they don't charge and i was like oh my god that's terrible you know i use like the vacuum for like there's this weird thing man these things are like uh like permanently, it's the nicest vacuum I've never seen. Such a nice car vacuum place. I mean, this, seriously, this was incredible. So like, uh, they're uh, they're totally. Uh, you know, I used it for like three hours, just going real slow, you know, because the thing stays on all the time. The vacuum cleaner, even well, anyway. So like, uh, um, and then uh, you know, I felt I, I had to give them some money. Plus, I like I had a mirror, I had to throw it away. I made a big mess in the trash can. I was just feeling so guilty. I just I went and I gave them some money, you know. And uh, whatever, man. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think it's the um, the employee probably pocketed it. But on the other hand, that's the one that had to clean the mirror. Is it? Is uh, it's kind of like a mirror, broken mirror sticking out of the trash can. It's this really nice, beautiful place, and I just felt I, just, I definitely crossed the line in being a, you know. So um, you want a you want an active conscience. Uh, theft is you know if you're using a restroom. I mean, in my conscience, that's. That's theft. I mean, they gotta get employees to pay that shit. And when you start, my parents are like, "Oh yeah, yeah anything, the, the stores are evil, the marketing, you know, anything they can get away with." You know. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you know, my my little brother, it can kind of cross into homo. Like if you start giving shit for nothing, you know, it's a, it's a dangerous line. You know what I'm saying? Like, on the one hand, you need a certain uh, I don't know. Uh, you don't like to me I don't care about uh, prices on little items and you know what happens if does that break down like you're no longer looking at price the, the breakdown in capitalism if price doesn't matter you know well, anything under five bucks I pay no attention right and uh, or I don't know what the threshold but like on some on some level shit starts to break down doesn't it but anyway uh um uh I don't know anyway so uh, smart money I, I used to I used to you know, you want smart money is, is you know, you can practice, I just, uh, just for fun, fun little thought, does, could you break down capitalism by injecting dumb money, you know, I don't know, anyway, so, uh, um, so, uh, uh, where are we, so, uh, So uh, the Bible says not to give the appearance of sin. And so uh, what if there's, you know, I, I buy a lot of cigarettes at that. So, okay, I, I'm entitled to their bathroom in my head. Um, but, like, uh, oh, you know, their employees are good. As a matter of fact, they chased me out of the uh, the parking lot the other day. And I'm, now I'm over here. So they, they got, it seems like, a, that's that's the white circle, okay? They got white. These are, like, these are these are white people that, uh, hard to put, hard to put this. Those are like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I was going to say, uh, 
uh, they got white employees at Circle K. What do I, what, what more do I need to say? Anyway, so like, um, uh, uh, we can get in another lecture, but that's for another day. But anyway, so like, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to, um, you know, they, you know, white people, they, they, they worry about the store, you know, it's like, they're, they're conscientious, they're like, hey, they're, somebody's, uh, you know, like the question, you know, it really bothers I would hate to be in a situation that you have to go after shoplifters and stuff. That's kind of fucked. Uh, anyway, I was in a deli up in Vegas, and uh, I, was, I was the deli operator. It's kind of a crazy story. But, like, uh, you know, you got this, this torn loyalty, right? Like, the the uh, the owner of the store wants you to uh, uh, basically, uh, you got to unload the, you know, the, the customer only wants the, the prime cuts, and, uh, and they want you to be generous, right? So you got to sit there all day long uh, balancing the scales. It's, and like if you're if you start with a crazy, insane, scrupulous person, this is like fucking tortures. Like oh my god, all day long I got to fucking balance these. I got to balance my loyalty to the store and the loyalty to it's just gives it a fucking agony. You know what the fuck am I doing? We can get into more stuff about that. But anyway, uh, so like, uh, so like uh, don't don't give the appearance of sin. So like. Now Terry's wondering about that, and like, uh, you know, should, like, like if I use a restroom, should I buy something? And then, like, yeah, at what point is it like, uh, you know, like, you know, I'm buying something I didn't want. Anyway, if it is something I want, Terry asks himself, how much do I want this? And eh, should I just walk out without using, buying anything? So, like, uh, this is the sign of an active conscience, and you want to, I, I think, you want a strong conscience. You know, one of the things uh, Catholics do is they go to confession, and. Uh, God talked about performance monitoring. Um, basically, if you if you got this, uh, you can kind of think of it like in computer terms. You got you got a little program that's like uh, that's self-analyzing yourself. And and uh, and uh, if you look at the sins of Isaac Newton, um, you know he's very it's crazy how how he's like really trying hard to think of sins, right? So this is a. The Catholics say, I think the Catholics say you want a strong conscience and work to develop a strong conscience. You know, Zuckerberg killed his food. You know, that, that was important to him. Uh, I, I respect it. I was like, yeah, I don't respect a lot, but that, that was a sign of uh, at least there's something going on. The, the, it's kind of like uh, the highest order person. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know what his motive was. There could be bad motives. But like uh, anybody who, uh, who invents some... Uh, some uh, what do you call it item of conscience out of nothing is a pretty distinguished person you know what I'm saying so anyway so 